Hey there, I'm Verity Songon and this is the Confident CEO podcast, the show that takes you behind the scenes of starting and running your small or not so small business. We will cut through the misinformation and bad advice about starting and running a business and give you actionable tips and advice that you can implement to grow, scale and achieve your business goals. Let's dive in. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Confident CEO podcast. Now, you are absolutely not going crazy if you're thinking, Verity, there are two episodes that have dropped today as opposed to just one. I promise you, you're not going crazy. But this episode is so closely related to the other episode that dropped out today that I thought I'd actually do something a little bit different and do almost like a part one and a part two. So the previous episode or the first episode that came out today is all about what you need to think about and what you need to do before buying an online course. And that was very much around the premise of somebody who had bought a course, had bought into a membership and were kind of promised something which they did not see the reflective results on. And interestingly enough, the same week, I then was in another Facebook group and I saw a absolute cry for help. There's no way of putting it other than a cry for help for somebody else who had enrolled on a very, very well-known um, coaches program to create their own online course and was just kind of being stung and they were looking for support and help. So I will say some of the things that I say in this episode are they going to be controversial? I don't know. They're based on my opinion of when I did course creation professionally. As some of you may know as well, I do have a background in teaching in further education and higher education. So what I'm going to say is very much coming from that teaching perspective and from those teaching experiences of building and selling online courses. And yeah, I don't know. I grappled with quite for quite some time about creating this episode because I didn't want to come across as preachy or anything or I really I don't really know, but yeah, mainly preachy, but I think that there's some there's some conversation that just needs to be had around this topic and around doing your research before you buy a course, a program, a membership, invest in a coach and all the rest of it because there are some amazing courses out there there are some amazing coaches out there and the majority of the time the coaches the memberships the master classes the coach you know all of the things the courses they are absolutely amazing it's just that you know there are ones that crop up every so often which maybe aren't as genuine or as trustworthy i don't know you can you can kind of take it as it is and you know it's um either way i'm just going to start talking about the actual post and what happened, what I saw in this Facebook group and give my take on it because otherwise I think I'm just going to like rabbit for ages. But this individual was in a course creator Facebook group, a Facebook group for course creators, which is primarily filled with people who have actually not primarily filled, but it's a mix of people who are in there, both seasoned course creators and also newbies to online course creation. And what they said is, I'm going to kind of paraphrase this, um, just for the purpose of the podcast. But basically, they were working with a business coach who had helped them set up their very first digital course and they were using Thinkific for that. Great. Thinkific, in my opinion, is a great platform. Um, You know, I've mentioned on this podcast before that you've got to choose an online course platform that works for you. There's no one correct, in inverted quotes, there's no correct course platform. It's got to be based on what you want, what features you need, what features you want, and also what you just, you know, the interface that you like as an individual as well. So using Thinkific, no problem with that. And then they went on to say that their coach had then told them to use and to purchase a whole load of platforms to quote unquote, get the course out into the world. They were recommended after I'm assuming they purchased Thinkific. I don't know this for a fact because you do have a plan of Thinkific where you get one course for free. That has changed very recently. If you're thinking no verity, you get more on their free plan. You actually don't now. They've changed it recently. So they could be on the free plan for Thinkific for for all I know, but I'm going to make the assumption that they weren't. But they were recommended by their coach to go and purchase ClickFunnels, ActiveCampaign, Deadline Funnel, GoToWebinar and Calendly all to quote unquote, get their um, course out into the world. And I just 
died a little bit inside, to be quite honest, because I'm going to pull up the web pages right now to give you current pricing. And to start with GoToWebinar, the lowest payment that you can make for GoToWebinar is $49 per month. For Deadline Funnels, the lowest payment is $39 per month. For Click funnels, the lowest is 120. Wow, I didn't realize it was that. Is $127 per month. And for active campaign, the lowest is $29 per month. So let's just do some incredibly quick math. So let's do 29, add 127, add 39, add 49. Very quickly, that comes to 244 US dollars, which just to convert across to British pounds is 202 pounds and 59 pence. 200 quid per month for additional features that this coach was telling this individual they absolutely needed in order to get their course out into the world. And I literally just died inside because I was like, as a brand new course creator, Who's got a casual £200 just sitting around to invest in a course which you don't know if it's got going to take off? You've got no students in it yet. You've got, you know, you haven't done your pre-sales or anything like, you know, there's just, oh my God, there was just, there was so much. So we need, I felt the need, we don't need to go through this, but I felt the need to create this episode and just kind of talk through this. Now, we had way back when the episode, when the podcast, sorry, started, we did an episode with the wonderful Melissa Gala. I'll link it in the show notes. Please go back and listen to it if you are creating your own online course. Absolutely fantastic episode where Melissa came on and she talked all about webinars and selling your course using a webinar. And one of the biggest pieces of advice that she left in that episode is do not try and create a funnel and do not try and sell your course through a webinar until you have sold some of the courses by itself. And her logic for that was actually very smart, I thought, because she was saying that if you put together this entire funnel, if you put together, you know, with a webinar and all these different things and you don't sell any courses, you don't know which part of your sales funnel failed. You don't know whether or not it was the course, if it was the marketing and messaging on your sales page, if it was the webinar that was non-converting. You you can't figure that out because there are too many variables in your sales funnel. So what she was strongly recommending is have your course, try and sell your course as just the course and your sales page to begin with. And then once you've sold some of those courses, then you can start adding more and more things into your sales funnel. And then if you start seeing a dip in your sales or whatever, you know, you're starting to see non-conversions, then you can look at the latest piece that you have added into that sales funnel and you can start to troubleshoot around that. So looking at that advice, which I have to say, I think is incredibly smart, in comparison to this advice of put all of these different things in place, I was just like, well, that goes against any kind of troubleshooting advice because how is this person meant to know how to build a successful market, you know, sales funnel, I mean, because they haven't sold any courses to to begin with. So that was my first complete confusion. My other one was around getting something, you know, getting a paid email marketing system. I have never recommended to people that they get a paid email marketing system when they first start out. And the reason is because you can get so many for free. And I just think, why not? You know, ConvertKit, MailerLite, MailChimp, the list probably goes on and on and on with the other ones that I can't think of right at the moment. But they all have free plans, either up to a certain amount of emails sent per month or up to a certain amount of... um, subscribers and what have you. So to immediately go and recommend that somebody pays for a paid email system straight off the bat, I just, I couldn't understand that either. I thought that was a little bit, a little bit ridiculous to be quite honest with you. And again, webinar software, go to webinar is brilliant. It's got lots of amazing features, but there are way cheaper alternatives out there. I use webinar kit, for example, and that was actually a one-time fee. I want to say don't quote me on this, but I'm sure I only paid about $70 and I've got lifetime access to that now in comparison to GoToWebinar, 
which is the, you know, the recurring monthly fee. And it's not, it's not cheap and it's fine if that fits into your funnel and your overall marketing strategy. But when you're right at the beginning, I just don't see the, the need personally. And Calendly, we all know that I absolutely love Calendly. Yes, there is a free plan, but then if you need the features from the pay plans, then that starts from, I think it's around $15 per month, about 12, 13 pounds, something, something like that. So to kind of go back to the person's concern, they were really concerned. They were like, do I need all of these platforms? Because, you know, the cost is just adding up. I just don't have this um, cost. Should I have actually invested in something like Kajabi or Kartra, which are more all-in-one platforms? They do have a significant price attached to them. I know people, I haven't looked at um, Kartra too much, but I do know that um, a lot of people get put off by Kajabi just because of the initial price. But then actually, I know a lot of other people who actually save money because even though it is a price, pricey monthly subscription it's the only monthly subscription they're paying they're not paying for loads of other things but kind of you know that's that aside you know they were just asking for help and saying just what on just what on earth do I really need all of these and you know what the comment section was absolutely ram packed with people just saying you don't need all of this stuff like who the heck is telling you that you need all of this you, you know, who is telling you that you need to be creating a course, spending money on your online course platform, and then spending at least 200 quid, or like I said, just over $200 per month in all of these other platforms to quote unquote, get your course out into the world. They did give the name of their coach. I'm not going to give the name of the coach because I don't think that's very fair, but they did give their name of the coach. And all I'm going to say is it is somebody who is very revered in the online course space they've got you know hundreds of thousands of followers or tens of thousands sorry tens of thousands of followers on youtube tens of thousands of followers on instagram and other social media platforms and it just it kind of saddened me because it you know and i can't claim this and say that this is definitely what was going on but to me and this is my own personal opinion so nobody come after me no one come and sue me because as I said this is personal opinion I'm just basing this on the information that I've got in front of me but what it did to me was I thought it just stank of this coach has most likely got affiliate links for all of these different platforms and is saying you have to go and buy them and you have to purchase them and I can bet my bottom dollar that this person probably was given affiliate links to purchase all of these. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong. I have not got a problem with affiliate links at all. One iota, I use affiliate links. I've given my friends affiliate links before I've purchased using other people's affiliate links. I think affiliate marketing, personally, when done properly and ethically, I think affiliate marketing is is absolutely great because, you know, you as the person recommending the product are getting a little bit of a commission of the sale, but the person who is purchasing is not spending any addition for you to get that commission. Like I said, I think affiliate marketing is absolutely great, but you have to declare, legally, you have to declare when something is sold under an affiliate scheme. It has to be in your privacy policy. It has to be made obvious. It can't just be hidden. And it's very obvious from the conversation in the comments that this person was then engaging with in the comment section that there was no understanding if these were affiliate links or not. But what a lot of people were saying is it just comes across as a bit icky and like this person is telling you you need to be spending all of this money per month and then they are going to be making affiliate commission. So that then kind of got me thinking on another point and I ended up having a conversation over on Instagram in the DMs with a course creator who I know and we ended up having this whole conversation around the ethics of affiliate marketing and how it just feels like it can just be a bit icky sometimes and like I said I, I've got no problem with affiliate marketing but you've got to be ethical and you've got to be open and transparent and honest when you're you know, when you're recommending products and you can't just, in my opinion, I don't think you can just tell somebody you have to go and purchase all of these things. Otherwise, you know, no one's ever going to buy your course and all these things. It just, I don't know. It just, it frustrates me. And maybe that's just my personality, but 
you know, and I'm not kind of trying to say that there's a good right or a wrong way of doing these things, but it made me reflect quite heavily because as a lot of you know, I'm putting together the Confident Podcaster, which is an online course to teach people to take their um, podcast from idea and concept through to publish podcast. And within that program, one of the things that I am really passionate about is that everything that I recommend is as affordable and cost effective as possible. We all know that I like to be as cheap as possible. (laughs) You know, I like to do things as, you know, as ethically as possible. So, I mean, if I use GarageBand, which is free, to edit my software, why should I then go and tell somebody to not use GarageBand, but then to use something else, which I can then make money off of them selling? Maybe you're there thinking, Verity, well, that's not a very good business. Yeah, business mindedness, you should be, you know, recommending stuff where you can make money. But to me, it just doesn't seem very ethical. If I'm using something for free, why can't I just recommend that to you know, to other people. And yeah, okay, fine. I've got affiliate links in there. For example, I've got, I use Buzzsprout. I love Buzzsprout as my podcast host. So I recommend to other people to use Buzzsprout as well. If they use my link, yes, there is affiliate commission associated with that. But I'm very, very upfront with the fact that I'm saying I recommend Buzzsprout, but you don't have to use this. And here's my link. But again, you don't have to use this. You can go straight to the website yourself. That's absolutely fine. And I'm not going to hold it against you if you want to use something else. But do bear in mind that this course is more geared towards using X, Y and Z um, platforms and software and what have you. But my point is, is I just think that sometimes in the online coaching space, and it is a minority of the time, but I do think that sometimes the whole affiliate marketing can just be a little bit icky. And, you know, I'm not trying to say don't buy through affiliate links. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is when you are presented with affiliate links, when you're presented by somebody saying you have to buy this software, otherwise, you know, your course is never going to take off or your podcast is never going to take off. Your membership will be rubbish without this um, extra edition or whatever. Just consider what is the motive behind that? Is it that the person is genuinely wanting to help you is it that they genuinely think that the software is the best thing that you could possibly be using for your brand and for your creation or is there a motive behind it in terms of basically making money from you and you know I get it we're all in business we're all here to make money but I just think that sometimes there are some affiliate sales where people are obviously pushing things purely to get the affiliate commission as opposed to it being the right product for you. And I'm going to give you another example of this. I was in a mastermind call for a mastermind group that I'm in um, just last week. And one of the members was asking the coach, they were saying, you know, I have been using the free plan of Teachable, but um, Teachable and Thinkific, they've changed their free plans and how they're structured um, in the last couple of months. And she turned around to the coach and said, well, you know, do you have any suggestions as to what I could do? I was on the free plan of Teachable, but now that's not going to be, the features aren't going to be working for me. I'm going to have to go for a free plan, uh, a paid plan, I mean, sorry. Now the coach also uses Teachable and it would have been so easy for the coach to turn around and say, yeah, you know what I think you need like this really high tier of teachable here's my affiliate link off you trot but she didn't what she said was she goes right okay this is the what you're using on teachable and this is what you have been using and this is why and she said okay well my suggestions you can either do what teachable is telling you to do which is upgrade to their first plan because that will then help you keep the features she goes or if you're still wanting to go with you know, not paying anything, then actually what you could do, and then she gave this entire, you know, um, system and process in place whereby the individual could continue with their, you know, providing their courses and providing their masterclasses absolutely for free. And you think it would have been, like I said, so easy for that coach to turn around and go, well, yeah, you're obviously going to have to pay for Teachable now. And, you know, I, I don't think you do need the cheapest plan. You actually need this higher plan. And it, like I said here's my affiliate link it would have been so easy but she didn't because she really valued that individual and she just you know 
ethically she didn't want to take her down a rabbit hole and make her spend money that she didn't she didn't need to anyway i'm not sure if i've gone a little bit too long on the conversation and topic here but i want to wrap up and just get back to a few really really key points here the first key point is when you're presented with affiliate links please 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 just consider what is the main motivation behind the promotion of those particular products as i've said previously there are no correct quote unquote correct pieces of software when it comes to creating online courses podcasts memberships anything like that it's whatever has the features that achieves the goals that you want to achieve whatever fits your price range and your budget and also just what works for you as an individual some people like certain interfaces and certain pieces of software more than more than others and that's absolutely fine but you know for somebody to turn around and say you need all of these different pieces of software I wouldn't always be believing people when they're saying you need quite so much. I know some people who have made an absolute killing using just one platform to create and market their online courses, you know, and they haven't gone into, you know, purchasing all of these things for funnels and webinars and all these kind of things. I'm not saying you don't need them. I'm, please don't anyone come after me and say, oh, but Verity said you don't need all this stuff. They can work. But if you're going to purchase these things, it needs to be done as part of a strategy. Because at the end of the day, if your course isn't selling or you're brand new, buying a funnel strategy or buying a webinar platform isn't magically going to sell your course overnight. It has to be put in place and bought and used as part of a strategy. So that's just something that I want you to, to bear in mind there. So let me know what you think about this episode because I do think there have been some bits that I've said which have probably been a little bit more controversial. I hope that it hasn't been too, too ranty because I think that both of these episodes that have come out today have been very heavy in the opinion section on my part. But I just think that it was so odd to me that they, that these two comments came out in different Facebook groups basically saying the same thing that people had been you know told to buy stuff and feel like they'd been missold and a bit of a misconception well not missold that's a very strong accusation but you know but they had been kind of made promises and and what have you and things weren't quite transpiring the way that they had anticipated and like I said I think that these two episodes have been very opinion heavy but I hope that even if they just help one person think before they next buy a course or make that somebody just do a little bit more research before they invest with a coach that would make me really happy but I also want to leave you with the reminder that the very 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 vast majority of coaches courses memberships masterclasses and all the rest of them are of very high quality and are absolutely probably not worth the money that you pay for them in the sense that they are undervalued because there are so many things over there that, out there that you really should be paying way more for and you you know you just the value just speaks um just speaks volumes so i'm going to leave you on that note let me know what you think of these episode these two episodes that have come out today let me know what your key takeaways have been i would love to hear from you over in the dms over in instagram and i will see you next episode Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Confident CEO podcast. Before you go, I would absolutely be overjoyed if you could take just two minutes to leave me a review in Apple Podcasts. Reviews are a great way to tell Apple Podcasts how much you enjoyed the show and it helps the algorithm to push out the podcast to more people, thereby helping us to help empower even more badass businesswomen to grow their inner CEO and grow to be the confident CEO of their business that they can be. I love to shout you out in your reviews as well. So you never know, you might be hearing your name on the podcast in the next episode. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.